Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're going to paint some wolves today. I'm going to put them kind of together. They're a little bit smaller than normally what I do with, uh, you know, animal portraits and stuff. And like, if I lean back, you'll see a, the, the big gray wolf or timber wolf back there that I did as a portrait. And, and uh, so we're going to get a little smaller, but I think it'll be kind of fun. Remember we did the, the elk and I put those elk together in kind of a casual thing. Well, I had a request for could I do that with some wolves and so I, I drew up some of the wolves. Now this is these are two photos actually wolf photos that I, I purchased from Adobe Stock Photos and I kind of put them together in kind of a neat uh, little arrangement here and I'm going to use that. Um, this board that I have here is 14 by uh, 19 inches. It's just one that I had uh, you know laying around so but it would fit on a 14 by 18 canvas too just taking a little bit off the top bottom. I'm going to let this uh, edge out of here um, kind of fade away uh, you know, like I like to do, and uh, we'll paint this one mostly full and maybe put it in some snow. Now, these are some other photos that I, I purchased from Adobe Stock. Uh, these are European wolves, but I do like that this little pine tree kind of dragging back behind here, the bit of snow and stuff on the ground. So, we have some ideas, we have uh, some way to go, and let's go to it. The colors that I have out here, I'll, I'll make a list of the colors in the video description. The video description right below the title of this video. Just click, and I think it's like see more. You just click that, and you'll see the colors that I have out here. This is my standard YouTube palette, and I use the Heritage Multimedia Colors here, acrylic. That's all I paint with is these. That's everything that you find on the channel. That's all I use, okay? All right, so what I did with the board is you can use a canvas, but you know, some of this detail that we're gonna do in here is gonna get so darn small that you'll fight that weave. So unless you fill it up really well, I'm using just a regular board, a uh, um, uh, one quarter inch board, and I gave it a coat of what we have in, in the Heritage line uh, called Canvas Prep Medium. You can use white, and I just sanded it lightly and uh, we'll go from there okay and we'll see how this goes so I'm gonna I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna loosen up the background this is my three-quarter inch flat brush and again you want to see the list of colors go over to the description here but um, I'm gonna use my three-quarter inch flat brush I'm gonna put a little blue into this as, as a suggestion of the sky I like that light airiness now some of this might go away I'm just going to add some extender whenever I work backgrounds and stuff I like to use the extender just thins the color I like the color a, a bit thinner at here now that might be just a touch brighter than what I want to go so I'll gray it down with uh, some of the burnt sienna which will warm it as well and gray it down here that might be a better yeah, that's, that might be a little bit better. And I'm going to keep it very loose for right now, casual. And there, I know some of my students and stuff that, and it's you're out there and you're watching this, some of you really like the casual, some of you like to go a little bit more realistic. It's your painting. You do what you like to do. I just give you ideas. That's what I'm here for, okay? All right. So right over here where I might want to put that tree, let's take some pine green, some burnt sienna, well, you know, I like that warm, mottly color right in there. And uh, this will, is something right in here, if I'm planning for, you know, this wolf. Right now, you know, he comes off of here, but you lose a lot of his facial details there because there's so much light color right out through here. So if we, you know, use some of our color theory knowledge here and we impart some, and let me just paint around a bit here for a second. And... Uh, you know, use some of our color theory knowledge and push some of this dark right into there to create the contrast away from his face and his face will pop out uh, a bit more. Let's just drag that through. We're not sure exactly what we want to put in there, but, uh, you know, and, and this is what I like to do. I'll just, you know, I'll put out some suggestions of some of these colors out here and uh, we'll see what happens here towards the end. I like this kind of... Um, of stuff. Well, let me just put it this way. I like it, yes, but my customers like it. People who buy my paintings like it. So, you know, I'll just uh, add a bit of that. And I like spots of color as well. So, you know, uh, maybe a little bit more of that pure uh, 
burnt sienna and stuff like that out into there at that uh, will grab that area a little bit more but you can see already how it advances his face and we'll know more once we get into it but this is very contemporary to to do this kind of stuff it's very contemporary and i and and i sell a lot of impressionist and contemporary uh work and i like to do that and for some of my students especially for um those that have been painting for a number of years realistic because I used to paint a lot of realistic this is hard to do sometimes to get going and just put it on there just put it on there because it's just painting the board guys it's just painting the board we can change it okay and I do some time to time now down here I want to make a rock so what beautiful grays come from your your greens and reds blues and burnt siennas and since blue and burnt siennas what I have out here right now I'll use that so this is a, a, a little bit more limited that you've seen me use in the last uh, few videos when we did the big Western and stuff look at that beautiful gray and I can cool it with a, a touch more blue over here and I might want it a, just a touch cooler to play up against the wolves here but I want him standing up like a rock so I've got to put a rock in here and I'll, I'll, I'll plain, you know, I'll paint the planes of the rock. I'm going to bring light in this way. So we'll paint the planes of the rock here. When you paint, those of you who paint landscapes and stuff with me, we have three planes of the rock. The light plane, the receding plane, and then we'll have a shadow plane. And uh, so I'll take a bit more blue, a bit more burnt sienna, a bit a little darker over here. And then we'll we'll put in this will be a nice shadow plane that will uh, come right back through here that will um, basically help pop off this this wolf over here too. So I might want to have a idea of this rock right out through there, maybe uh, just a bit more something right out through here, and then I'll just take my paper towel and smoosh it out there. That's a technical painting term, smush it out. That's technical where you just lose the edges here. Okay, I just love doing this. You know, it's just uh, it's just a lot of fun. And to play, not play, you know, it's it's try, try things. And, try, and it's just painting a board and we try things. I think this is going to look pretty good if I don't make a mistake. So <laughs> we're going to have some fun. Oh, I also... Just in case of those eyes, I brought out my little uh, magnifying guys. I used to wear these a lot when I painted a lot of small Pollack miniatures and, and Zostava and stuff of miniatures. So I brought those out just in case here. So anyway, let's go in now. Let's paint and let's decide on the technique. I'm going to paint and paint basically, I think, a premier coup, which means I'm going to start with my dark tones, especially since I've got the, the, the lighter, basically the lighter background. So I'll start dark tones. Then we'll work up. So looking into the wolf, let's take the back one back here. Let's start out here with his nose, which is basically going to be a violet here. And I'm just going to go down to my smaller little fusions. This is a number four fusion flat. I'm going to put some violet, maybe a bit of burnt sienna into that. This will be a nice uh, dark tone. And I'll grab my, my stick here so I can lay this on. Here. And I'm going to leave a, a bit right there for the nostril. So, but most of that you're not going to see too much. So there's a nice dark tone there. We'll warm that just a bit. So it's not. I'm going to leave the nose pretty cold and dark, and then I'm going to warm it off to the side here with the burnt sienna. You can see that there with the burnt sienna gets uh, a bit more. We'll add in. We'll try to try to paint uh, when I'm going to paint something like this I'm going to try to smear it like this to get some more values and stuff but I'm going to paint small and I'm going to try to paint less than what you normally see me do uh, try to capture a passage with just a few strokes of the brush so that uh, um, you know I don't get bogged down in too much detail and if I stroke it too much it'll all become the same color so and I want to use the corner of my brush. Let's put in like the line there of his mouth. And so this number four is really very big for, uh, you know, for a brush.
but I just use different edges and corners of it to create some different types of passages here. And uh, let's just sketch a bit of that right out here. Maybe pull down, sometimes down and across and pull like that and see that that creates a modeling of the color in there. And that's what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, I'll add a, usually shadows and stuff we do thin. So I'm going to thin this out a, a, a touch more as I come over here, back up over here as I start to do a little bit more back here in this part of him. I'm going to want some of this stuff to vignette out which means, you know, I, I let it fade away. So, and I want that fading away, but I want some of this movement here, there, and maybe a stroke or two or something like that to uh, to suggest some of the, the color, but not a whole lot right in there. Let's add a bit right in here, just a corner of the brush, looking just for some of that movement here taking and really simplifying in your mind what I do here is, is I'm simplifying him back down to light and dark tones basically what I see right now and I'm going to keep everything that I do very simple because he's going to be small here and uh, we'll carry a bit of this out try to what I try to do is find the calligraphy of his fur how his fur is pulling down and I'll just replicate that motion that movement so right in here it's going to pull down but then it's going to shift and start to come out now don't use always the same size the same length and size of stroke you got to vary that somewhat so we'll put some of that in I just love <laughs> I just love painting like this especially now I get way back on my brush I sit back here you act like you know what you're doing and you just have some fun right now and you, you try to you try to give it a lot or as much as possible some character so see I added a little bit more burnt sienna which warms that up a touch and I want to I want to keep that for a minute let's add just a touch more just a touch warmer here and if I if I uh you know, really want to paint a lot of interest, I would actually paint this wolf back here a touch more uh, atmospheric, softer, or she, this is, a, I'd paint the female here, a touch more softer, and the male a, a bit more, and let him come forward here. But we'll see, because I can always do that. You know, I can al always do that. Now, so that gets a it gets an idea. Let's go back a little darker here and just scrub the edge. I like the fur kind of coming off that edge there and just blur that edge. See that blurred edge? Just take your finger, just blur it like that. And that makes a, this is called a found edge. This is called a lost edge. So the found edge will come forward here. And let's just thin out some of this color here and just just quickly sketch some of that back in there. We'll let some of this get lost back through there like that. So that gives a better chance for the male to come forward here. We'll push up just a touch of that color. Just a bit of the movement, not too much. See, we can soften this out and put in just more of a color. If I get too much working in it, uh, the brush movement there, he'll really come forward. Now, let's go over here to the yellows bit of yellow into this and that'll make a nice tan color maybe add just a touch of open medium to this so whenever I want to keep the paint a touch thicker I head to the open medium so he has a back leg back here which I kind of painted through so I'll just sketch it back in again I'm gonna lighten that right down here to a lighter tan I'm gonna keep this area on him really quite simplistic um, here uh, because I don't want to uh, and I got his leg a little bit too far down so we'll use the magic eraser which is a bit of water right there and we'll just smear that out he was, he was a real long-legged timber wolf here and we'll put his foot out there and uh, that's a very rare variety of it we'll drop one right in here and see that using that mottled brush there 
that will uh, keep her her fur here very uh, very suggestive. Okay, now I can take a mark or two of that right up here just to soften some of that color. Maybe um, just a mark or two of the light right up there. That just softens that out a bit, so it keeps her, you know, a, a, a little bit more calligraphy right in there. And so I'm watching my edges. I'll maybe put a touch more right out here. See, it gives a nice, that's a nice look. Now that might, that might be too much. We don't know yet until we get, you know, him on up here in the front. So, you know, and we got to soften out her face and we got to get this yellow burnt sienna right in here to get this uh, bit more of an orangey yellow. Right down here, we'll go down her muzzle here. We'll push that in. And then you, so I, I pull the line down here. That sets the front top plane of the face. And then we go down, slightly down this way, setting the side plane of the face, letting some of your brush calligraphy come through. So let's add just a touch of brown. That's just a touch too dark. Back up to my yellow again. Just pull right through that and set that side plane as simply as possible there on her face because we don't have much room to do a whole lot of stuff. Let's go back to the just a touch of the dark. Run that right in there as well. And I, this is what I want. I want to do quick strokes and leave some of that those streaks that you see right in there. That's going to do the, the look for us, okay? It's Add just a touch of that dark right in here. And so uh, you'll see me sometimes hold the brush very flat. That gives me more streaks. Or use the tip that softens it out here. Or I can use the chisel to get more of a line, you know, direction of a line in there. Let's add those light tones around the eye there. Slightly yellow, so a bit of my whites and stuff here, but then a touch of that yellow oxide. Let's add those light touches right in there. And in a lot of uh, Premier Coup and stuff that you're you're putting in here, that this is called this part of the painting where you're you're block painting. This is called block painting, and a lot will call it a poster block painting. Uh, this is called block painting, dropping the tones in here, just like that, so that you can see the tonal area, and then you'll start bringing the relationship of the tones together. But right now, we're just gonna block in some of the, the touches that uh, that needs to be a bit lighter. Right up, so I got these light marks that you see on her, around her eye. You know, I don't need, I, I'm not gonna try to make anything perfect, I'm just gonna try to capture the feeling or the, the, the uh, impression of the wolf here. Let's take that dark out, just boom, just drop that little bit right there. I'm, so I'm trying to be as very careful as possible. See, if I stroke that again, if I stroke that again, that will blend those two colors together. And I don't want to do that. I want those tones to stay very much separated from each other because she is, you know, and, and he here are so small that uh, the slightest little extra movement of the tone, you know, a brush, will blend it and they'll all become one tone and I don't want to do that. I'm going to take some dark, let's go make it a little bit more dark here, blue and burnt sienna. Let's add some open medium to it, which is nice and thick. So this is that Daraman open medium. You see me use it all the time. Here, see how thick that is? And sometimes with this open medium, like this open medium that's here, those of you who have painted with or not, this open medium I have had set out for the last four days, just sitting on my palette, nothing doing to it. And it's still just like that. You'll, you'll see here's open medium right out of the jar, okay? If I pour the open medium right out of the jar, it's still very, very thick. You'll see it here. It's a little bit thick. But so this open medium is fresh. This has been out for four days four days and uh, since I did the last uh, horseman and um, I just transferred over there so it's just a touch thicker but open medium stays out for a long time long long time but sometimes I like it a touch thicker so I'll just let it sit on my palette here so let's grab some of this gray 
let's restate that and see the open medium will make it a, a touch transparent and that's going to give me some calligraphy here right in there and allow me to put some of those colors of that wolf right in there a little bit gray some transparent here we'll pull some of this out here like this get some of those tones a bit here by her eye that's going to come out this way so I'll look to find that, you know, where do you see it? See, there's a kind of a swooping stroke right out there. And I want to make sure I capture that movement. So as you get really small, you start to really watch the movement of your brush, how that, you know, the calligraphy, what we call the calligraphy, the movement of your brush to make the shapes here. And so we'll bring that in. That'll be good. That that light color needs to be a bit lighter on her, I think. I'm going to take over here to some of the yellow, some open medium, and some white. Let's create a really light color that's really nice down in here into her tan areas. Here, we'll just pull short strokes some of that up there. Sometimes when you're painting and you're painting a small one like this, you might end up eliminating a tone or two just because they're, it's too hard to capture all of it, you know, so you eliminate part of it. Let's just grab some of this. So this number four works really well. Um, you might consider even starting out with a six so that you get some areas blocked in a little quicker. You know, it does the four does take a... A, a bit more time here. Let's grab some lighter gray right there. So with this light board and the open medium by uh, by using the open medium to help, because the open medium here is really thick and by using this to help transparent out my colors I allow the light of that board to show through and it's doing some of my value painting for me here as well. Let's put a right out here just a touch more of that gray give a nice fur look right there to it and uh, let's bring in this right up into her this way so I'm, I'm reading that coming around this way around into her nose and then it'll come lighter so I'm going to lighten this up right up in through here Right up by the nose. It's got to go lighter yet. That's not light enough. Not quite light enough. Almost there, but not quite. Let's go just almost pure white. And usually you don't see me jump to pure white, but on a small one like this, I might just go ahead and do it. And because you, you know, again, I eliminate some tones. That's not a good read right there. It's better. Right in there. Drop in a touch of this color right in there. That's not too bad. Let's go to that tan color back here. And just push some of that in that one. That tan color, maybe a bit more yellow. So some of your grays, yellows, and into your whites, you get these beautiful tan colors. Here, I'll tap that around and push. That makes it more fluffy looking rather than stroking it or making a mark, which uh, gives it more of the fur look right there. And then I'll look for, you know, after I get some of this on, I'll start looking also for smaller, littler tones, yellows, burnt siennas. Where do you see some of those yellow burnt sienna tones? Right in here. More yellow, some open medium. When I want those tones, I get that open medium. I don't need tons of paint. Just And see, that's just a pretty little tone right in there. It picks up that little edge right in there. You're not going to be able to get all the tones that you see in that photo. Or you could if you spent all day on this thing. But I'm just going to try to capture them. You know, as I try to keep a painting like this. You know, under two hours, so that uh, you know that it keeps the for my selling market that keeps the cost and stuff of it down. You know, and and uh, 
and I, I can get a nice painting. I should be able to get a nice painting in just a couple hours by following these techniques here. So there's that color in there. We're going to need to do a, a bit more modeling and stuff in there. Some yellows and some grays. Let's put the back of his ear or her ear on here. Okay. Maybe little touches of that tongue right up the side of her ear here. There. So you can do, you know, and, and how much refinement you're going to do. That's up to you. But you can see you can do quite a bit of refinement. Let's go up light right here. Pull some of that down. That's the that's right underneath her chin. So we'll put some calligraphy right in there. Um, maybe a touch more light. And this is where I like to use the paint real thick and just set the light calligraphy pulling down. And you'll see I'll back right up into my the edges of my dark there, the edges of her mouth. And, you know, if I... If I'm doing a lot of small detail, I'd even just tap in a little gray and stuff up oh, too much. So I get to do that again. We just take it out a bit here and like that. But tap in, you know, it depends on how much time you're going to spend on it. We can put a, a slightly lighter touch to the top plane of the nose there. And then we'll get that nice blue, very dark blue, violet, cold here. Sometimes I'll add a little green into that. It helps gray it as well. And I'll tap that into his, her nose here. Just, and maybe even just a corner of my brush right there. Okay, now... So you can see we've got some nice modeled tones around her face. Not nearly what I would like to do. So I'm going to come back now. I looked at the undertone and I'll put that in. Now, here's also the other thing. When do you do the eyes? A lot of artists, and I'm one that normally does this, a lot of artists um, will say go to the eyes right away before you finish anything. Set the eyes because the eyes set a lot of the contrast that you want to have into your painting. So you could jump and go work on the eyes. I've got some beautiful tones going on there. I've painted wolves many, many times, many times. And so I know what I'm going to do with the eyes. And in my mind, I know what is going to happen with the eyes. If you're a younger painter, though, this is where I would go immediately into the eyes finish the eyes and then come back and do what I'm going to do now. Just for speed of the video and stuff here, I'm going to just work these tones a little bit more, um, change them up, and do what we call half toning and putting in other tones. In other words, other spots and smaller spots of light tones and what I see. But again, the eyes are very important and you would, you know, you could go in and work on those right now. So it's, it, it's your choice as an artist and a lot of artists say get the eyes done get the eyes in there and get them done and I'm one who does believe that but I'm going to come in and lighten a few areas add a few color marks and tones and just uh, light little touches like that which will help the, so here's my light this is going to help um, the calligraphy of the wolf the coloring of the wolf here We'll get that out of there. That was the wrong one. Put a touch more light. And see, I'll pick up some textures with this too. Even though this is the back one and I normally don't texture too much, I'm going to get just a little of the color there. Just a touch of that right up in there. I look for, you see, I got a, a, a small amount of that gray in there still, but I just look for, just to break up. So I'm looking to break up that main tone that I stated with uh, there at the very beginning with some other colors here. And um, I don't need to do a lot, but just break it up a bit here, which will give her a touch more interest here. So we'll pull some of that down there like that. And we'll soften some of these areas, half tones, half tones right between the 
the dark and the light there. So you can see I can soften that, that exchange right there. We can go a touch lighter right in there and soften that exchange between the light fur and the side plane of her muzzle there. Let's, that could also be deep and darkened right in there. A little gray, a little burnt sienna. I'll put both in my brush, not mixing them real well, and let them come off the, the uh, brush differently there so we get a different look to it. Now, I like that. I'm going to lighten the top plane of her muzzle a bit lighter than what you see here for right now just to see to bring that forward with some paint there just like that so bringing that forward on her and I've got it kind of drooped there a bit so I'll correct that this side of it here and and that's it now what's causing that droop bad penmanship <laughs> It's, it's, uh, I got the, the plane of the nose out, not quite out as far as the plane of the, of the face there. So I have to bring the plane of her nose out just a little bit more there. And, and that will straighten out her nose, not give me that droop that was there. Let's do the front plane there. There we go. So you just get some nice modeling in there. She's not quite as dark up into the front plane of her nose as the uh, photo is. So I'll probably darken that just a little bit more in there. That's good. Now that dark, I'm going to rinse that out. When I'm working with the brush, now this is the other thing too, is this is my smaller number four. I do have, you know, a number two, and I have a number two filbert, which, uh, fusion, which is what I really like to do when I go to paint the eyes. Since I got this dark that's right here, let's just go ahead and do those eyes, and then I'll keep working the tone. So round the eyes first is almost like what you call on a bird, we call it the eye ring, but there's going to be the dark color that's going to go around the eyes of the wolf here first. And we might as well, while we're here, put in the eyes on him as well. There. And you can see that sets, that sets a lot of the contrast that's going to be here on them. And so you can see I use some different widths of lines and a bit of open medium in there. Let's put it on, it'll be just a touch softer over here. Okay. She will have the dark pupil of the eye. Give her that starey and, and it's that line above the eye that really makes them kind of angry. So we keep that <clears throat> kind of stiffness to it. I'm going to just draw just a touch of those darks around here, which will bring her eye out just a little bit more here. So see, you can use your dark, a dark filbert like this to come in and add some more, restate some darker tones right in there. <clears throat> Does a lot. Now, she's got that real light. Get that dark out of your brush. She's got those, and this is where, like on the other one that I that bleh, that uh, timber wolf, which is timber wolf, is a subspecies subspecies of the gray wolf. So these are actually gray wolves, but we call them timber wolves. But they're it's uh, they're they're basically all related. The uh, I'm going to take a, some uh, darulite yellow and some yellow oxide here, and we'll glow up the eyes a bit here. She sets back, so she's not going to be as glowy as what I might make her. So I might put just a touch of the burnt sienna. We'll keep these eyes kind of soft here. There, like that. And, you know, we can go, you can head more towards a figure type painting. Where we'll bring that pupil and this upper line together here. That will give her some more character. Figure painting, you um, when you're getting into small little things, and those of you who have seen me paint figures in some of my landscapes and stuff, I start to soften the features out, bringing some of the light and, and painting what we call light and shadow 
of the of the figure together. So here I'll bring that light and shadow of that or that pupil and stuff together that'll bring her eyes together a bit more. But so when you read it from right there and you're looking at that, you don't really pick up a lot of difference between I mean the the planes of shadow and stuff kind of run together, which is what you do in 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 a figure painting. They, you lose in other words you lose some of the detail look into the uh, the painting and uh, that's what you do so we'll do that with her here and uh, let's bring some of that shadow but using the small little filbert like this you can really manipulate those tones quite easy here let's manipulate these edges here right in there some of that tone right in there little grade bit gives her some some additional look let's I'm going to switch over to some light so I'll get rid of that dark out of there let's go yellow oxide and some light maybe a bit of the burnt sienna here and uh, look to that light there nice found edge of light right around the front of this nose, rounds up just there. That pops that off a bit. And some better, better color, more color right in there will bring that part of her side plane of her face forward and take some of that paint off and just lightly whisper this up so I don't lose all the calligraphy of that. and. You'll see some of the other calligraphy there, and as you can see, there's like you know if you if you narrow down your lo your look, you'll see there's little bits of like maybe burnt sienna right in there, and with this small little brush, you can come back in and just add that little bit that you see there, but you know all of that it's going to give you a great painting, and but all that takes time too. See, what is the main difference you know with a lot of the things I paint? You know I. I you know, you watch me here on the channel. Hopefully you subscribe to the channel. But uh, there's paintings that I do that are quicker paintings that I do for the general market. Then there's paintings I do for my collectors, paintings I do what I call the big studio paintings. And it's all with how much time and detail. And you'll find all, per, you know, well, the majority, let me, do, I can't say all, but you'll, the majority of, of fine artists out there will do that. We will... You know, we have paintings that we we know we could put more into. In other words, we don't make every single painting that we do, you know, the Mona Lisa or Rembrandt or something like that. They, you know, there's some that are done a little quicker and they don't sell for as much. And that's just what we do. And so how much work I'm going to put into the tones of this painting is... You know, how much is going to, for me, it'll determine the price. And But, you know, if I was a, if I wasn't doing this professionally, I would just love to sit down because it's fun. I would just love this to sit down and put a lot of nice work into this painting. Like get this side plane tone pulling down right like that a bit more. So it's just, but all of that takes time. Let's get just a touch darker here. And usually when you're painting the small little wolf like this, you don't really need to. You can get a nice look fairly quickly, but you can see that's um, a little bit too samey-same. So even for me at, with him, I'm going to change that. Just let's, let's cool that down. Change the, I like to change that gray. So it's always different. Let's just pull a bit of different gray right in there. Break that up a bit. And a touch of that right up there. Maybe a little bit of a mark. So this small little brush, you can come around and you can put some wonderful work into the into the wolf here without uh, too much time. Let's uh, drop this eye down here like that maybe a bit more over here right there get this 
darkness right there. And there's just a touch of the kind of light color coming off of that corner over there. And you can lightly use the brush to do what we call like a scumbling here of the, especially on a small one like that with some of that shadow to help form and shape up. Put the tear duct in here onto his face here. Boom, down like that. Maybe break up this with a touch of tone. And you can set that back. So back and forth. And in a lot of the techniques, those of you that watch me on the channel here, subscribe to the channel, all that kind of good stuff. You see I paint back and forth between the tones, crossing the edges until I get a look that I want. So even with a small one like this, I may tap it a few times of those tones. And I took out a little more of the shadow than I wanted to, so I'll just drop some of that back. But you can see, you get those tones in there, and that's what makes it really quite nice here. Let's uh, rework those tones. Right up here. Now it's just a, a matter of uh, how much. I don't like that. I like the lip here being out just small amount more like it's on her. I like that burnt sienna tone in there as well. Just a bit more burnt sienna. There. Changes some of the expression on her face. And uh, her eyes really can soften down a bit more. So she's not quite so stary. She's way back. And <clears throat> I would work you know, I'd use my small brush, some light color here, and I would work that edge a couple of times on that lid to make sure I set that. Because that upper lid sets her expression. It's going to set his as well. And uh, so we'll get that in there. Maybe a touch more light right up there. And... You know, again, this is really, really small. I'm surprised I haven't gone to my little glasses yet. Here. But, uh, and just a bit of yellow. And you can, like I say with anything, you can work any of these stages, any of this painting, since we're painting all the Prima here and stuff, but or Premier Coup, basically. You can work any of these stages at any time. So, uh, you know, you can come add a bit here like this and then come back and, um, you know, and towards the end of the painting and add more in. Or if you want to go jump and paint on him for a while, which is always a good idea. Get some of those tones in there. That's a good way. Um, I want to pop this part forward. I want some beautiful calligraphy right down in here. This is going to be the interaction area between him and her. So, and you can notice I push my brush real hard. That flattens it out and gives me a good calligraphy stroke here. Then I'll raise up onto the tip or chisel to get some more brush calligraphy or brush working in there. And um, yeah, I just using your brush it's slightly a bit different. I'm going to narrow her nose down just just a, another stroke or two um, I lost some of that darkness that's right here which I want to preserve right there there'll be a very fine little line on the timber wolf it comes down dark right down that nose right there so We'll make sure we capture that area. A little softer out over here. There we go. Let's push this back just a bit there. Like that. Um, she needs to have a little reconstructive surgery over there on the side of her face over here on this eye and stuff here. I'm going to set that 
back and we'll put that lighter mark in there. And then I'm going to go work on him and I have to come back and work on this area of her again. But I'll get to what happens for me is I'm an, I'm an acrylic painter and as I start to get too much color on there, it'll stay too wet for too long. And so I like to, I like to come in and, and let it dry just a bit so I can come back and work on that area again. I need to uh, define her, work on her. It's small, but just a touch more relaxing on her eye there, I think. Maybe a bit more of the dark right out there. Let's get that blue, burnt sienna. Nice dark out here. Hair like that puts that shadow in there. This could have. Um, well, let's just do it right now. Uh, some of that bluish gray in there will lighten it up a little yellow in them. And I'll hold the brush kind of flat and just pull in like this, and it'll, you can see I get some nice calligraphy there for the angle or some of the hair that's there on her and the fur. Just gives you some nice marks for some of that fur. Here I want this just to, we're just gonna let it fade away. Maybe just take a few back and forth with a few tones like this. Try not to stroke it too many times, they'll blend, but leave some just color marks of it there. And that works pretty well. Um, she could. That's a beautiful tone, this mid-tone here with that burnt sienna in it. And uh, we can expand that right in here on her. Touch more. See, it's beautiful, warm sienna there. There we go. And uh, that'll work. Probably going to have to put on my little cheaters here when I do the final bit to really kind of shape up her eye, but... That's not too bad, and you know. But I try to I try to just simplify everything. A little downstroke here, there, so it simplifies on her. Let's go work on him. Same kind of thing. We'll go back to the burnt sienna, some of the uh, blue. We'll pick out some darks here. And usually in my sketches and stuff, I put the darks on. Those of you that are members of the channel, I will put a picture of my of my sketch here on the uh, in the members area and stuff, so you can use that to help your painting. Let's get a bit of the nose here. So I pull across basically that top plane. And then I pull down and stuff here into the front to give it that front plane. I, I treat it like, and that helps you real quick. It's your calligraphy. It's your calligraphy. Always thinking and watching your calligraphy. There'll be a bit of dark coming here. And of course, a bit further out on him coming out here. Let's touch in very simply here. Pupil of, <laughs> wow. That was way too big. <laughs> I get to show you how to correct that. You know, I don't want to go in there and try to remove it with water because what will happen is it will just turn gray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of acry uh, acrylic white and just paint it back out. Just a bit of that there so that uh, I'll be able to come in and adjust it. Remember in the old days, those of you who used typewriters in the old days like me, we used whiteout, right? I always called that my whiteout. Okay, I just use a little whiteout. That is not approaching it carefully there. Here we go. That'll be better. So let's continue on. Change the tone a bit here. So it's a little different. Um, and we'll, we'll darken this quite a bit right in here too. And... and here and around. See, I use different edges of my brush, so I get some different types of calligraphy. I really want this area here, too, 
in Vance in front of her, so I want to get it kind of dark and some nice calligraphy here. Right in there like that. So that'll come up in front of her. He'll have a dark mark right in there. Some dark lines. I use my brush sometimes when I'm doing this, just like a you would, you know, a pencil and sketching on them and stuff. So here. But I'm using the smaller little filbert right now, which is working nice. That little four is a lot easier. Actually, when I go to do him here, I'm going to go up, maybe even an eight here, as we go out. Because we're going to want, and I'm going to add some open medium here, so it gets transparent here, because we're going to want a vignette. I want to vignette him. You can do whatever you want with your wolf. So I'm going to vignette him there, which means I'm, going to, I'm adding that color, that tone, but it's transparent here because I'm really adding a lot of open medium here. So it's transparent here. And I'm going to let these tones just kind of fade away here. Going out now, well, let's get to a bit of yellow, burnt sienna right down in here. We'll put some light color on there as well. But see, I get, when I start to get out, especially where I'm going to vignette, I uh, vignette means to just let it kind of fade away into the back. So this is a vignette right out here. When I let that happen, that's when I really like to get my, my brush calligraphy really in there. Let's put that on her leg there. And uh, maybe a bit of light with this on his. So we'll have to, uh, you know, I'll let uh, in, in the painting, and, and that's it's okay to do that in the painting, to let some areas kind of join together in there, you know. But I'll be able to take some strokes and work through and separate them as well here. We'll work on that as well. Um, but I'm going to have to uh, work her eyes again, I, th I know for sure. As I come out here also, I'm going to thin out with some extender here. And uh, I'm going to let some of this of him right here just kind of fade away here. Really fade away. We'll get some light color here. But we're really going to let that fade away. We'll do big brush stuff there in just a bit here. Let's uh, use this gray for some of the tones in there. You know, it feels good switching sizes of brushes too, back and forth. You know, kind of gives you, each one gives you a little different calligraphy here. And, uh, softer, lighter. We'll get this big shoulder on here. And touch lighter, a bit more yellow going down his front here. Front leg. And I like this very much the calligraphy to be very soft in there. That's the way I'm going to portray it here very I'm going to try to go to some bigger strokes marks here and just try to capture the movement in there without a whole lot of detail on him just the idea of it you know and when I first said those of you that are, are young artists when you first start this it's it's hard it's not an easy thing to do to break it into simple strokes uh, to visualize it. It takes some time. It takes some practice. You know, but you can do it. We all... And I'm just going to model those colors together here and just get some simple look to him. And this will give me a good idea of what I need to simplify on her like and, and you know, bring out on him to help the separation of the two as well. So let's uh, 
got some of this dark right down here. So I'll look for some bands of dark that I can drop in. So in other words, simplify it here. There. there we go. And uh, we'll take some of this medium right in here. And I'll work this up. I'll end up working this a couple times, but just quickly through, set that area up. Let's go back, I'll put that one away for a bit. Let's go back to our number four here. More of the warmer tones, the burnt sienna and yellow. Touch of light, maybe a touch of gray. But that just helps change and model up the tone. You don't want to paint forever and ever with you know, the same type of tone especially on a wolf, because they change colors a lot. Here, let's get a bit more yellow up this side. So I'm just capturing the area, and then we'll go in and refine them. Some more, some, this side's a touch grayer right in there. Kind of a warmish tone in his ears, but gray there. And you can paint back and forth, so I can take my blue burnt sienna here. It's a nice dark. And touch that in again, just to break that. And remember, it's simplistic. Keep it simplistic. Here. And anything that, like if you have harsh lines between light and dark, you use a little half tone in there. So it sits right between the light and the dark is that little half tone. And that comes in and helps you soften some of the look here. And, you know, so there's half tones right in there. And there's going to be half tones right up here, which is right, right between the light and dark. It's the medium values. It's right between the light and dark that you show, the medium values that you show. Down low over here, it's lighter and grayer. Here, let's put a little bit of that light gray up here as well. Here we go. So just like on the, the lady here, I'm going to come through and work some of these tones on him. Now, to help him come forward, let's take a look. Let's thin out some light right here. And let's play artist and lighten up some of this and smooth out just a bit more. Remember I said we might have to do this to bring him forward. So here, we'll smooth out some areas which are gonna cause him to advance. Maybe even fudge in a little more light to cause him to advance. This is all artistic choices that you make. See how he starts to advance. So you're playing light against dark. Let's smooth out a bit over here. I love that calligraphy on her, but it's not all that interest on her is not allowing him to come forward as much. Let's darken thin this touch. Darken him right here. Now he could go lighter there too, but the dark, since we've lightened her, you could do it in reverse too. You're, you're, it's your choice, it's your painting here. I'm just gonna add touches of the dark, which is gonna contrast against her light. Now, why do I pick that making her light? Because the background is mostly light. And so it's just like if you're painting a landscape with me or something like that, we look at that atmospheric. How do you make her 
more atmospheric? How do you bring those edges? How do you soften her out? She gets actually softer when she gets lighter, see? So we'll push a little bit of that light right in there, some of that movement that's right in there, and she'll get a touch softer here. Bit of that there. And uh, some of that nice dark here on him. Now let's get some of that light on him as well. We'll start getting that lighter, warmer, yellowy tone. Light. There's a big bunch of it right here. And see my brush is mottled, so it bottled me. It has a bunch of colors on it, but they're not mixed. So we'll get some different colors coming out here. Which is what I want. That nice light. So it's coming right down. Big light spot right in here. One right in here. We'll have to redo a bit of the dark. But as I get lighter, I usually like to get that nice yellow tone in here as well. Changes him over. Let's get... Let's even touch a touch of the Hansa, a touch, because it's going to brighten it up, warm it up, lighten it up, bring him a bit more intensity, a little bit of yellow, which will all help him come forward even more. Here, maybe a bit of the and play back and forth, you know, your sienna's in here because you're going to get it pretty much the same. See, so you just come back with a little of that burnt sienna and we'll bring all of this gray right in here underneath his jawline. Bring all of this down. That'll advance his jawline. There. And uh, maybe a nice touch of light calligraphy here right down like that I, I'd love to do the basically the throat hair and stuff like you'll see me at the dog portraits and and stuff I like to get some nice swirls and pulls right down out there like that because that's just a real interesting area and I like to bring that out let's uh, put the side plank that's a Good, kind of a good tone here for the side planes of the muzzle here, there. Now, maybe a touch of blue, slightly cooler. We're going to bring the light in because I still have to put cool colors on her too. Slightly blue, a little cooler coming in on this side. Yeah, see, that works. And uh, we'll get a bit of the gray in that cool blue. Right in there, work that, some of that tone, that's, that blue really does a lot. We need to get some of that into the rest of the painting here. Need to get that in. Break up, slightly different tone, break up air, larger areas of tone with a slightly Slightly different, just has to be, you know, doesn't be exactly the same, just close. Let's put some gray right in here up underneath his eyes. Try to stay out of his eyes, Dave. I'm going to thin this out. Usually with the, so usually with the shadows, I'll say it again, with the shadows, I usually paint them on thinner. And I do a lot of drawing with the shadows. And then the lights, I do more opaque. And that's where I get my textures and stuff from. So I like the I like the shadows. Now they got that bigger shadow up above his eye, pulling down. So I'll thin the color just a bit. And you can see how easy that goes on. It's a beautiful tone. That's a pretty tone in on him. We'll just lightly push it in here. Don't get rid of all your light. Just push a bit of that in there into his face and uh, yeah she's gonna need a bit of softening I think to help her go back on some of this and uh, which we can do 
That's easy to do. There. <clears throat> yeah, I like that. Now we'll yellow this up. Kind of gray, but kind of yellow. Pull the down up over the eye. There's one a little bit more yellow, slightly lighter, because we're on the light side of him here. So we'll push that one up there. Maybe a touch underneath. That was too much. There. Bit of the softer right up here. Bit of the grayer. Pulling this, rounding down his face here. Let's get Bit of burnt sienna blue slightly on the burnt sienna side here pull that ear down want lots of nice color especially right in here on him to bring him right up in front of her there get that nice warm burnt sienna so that's a pretty tone in there. Especially if I'm, I've got a gray and the gray looks too dark, too cool. And you just hit that edge of that gray with some burnt sienna and it looks like you know what you're doing. It's really great. Just warms just an edge of it. There we go. Put in that lower mouth line right there slightly lighter just pull down ah, it's not that's still a little dark slightly lighter let's try that again there we go the front and that could be a bit darker right on the edge there it's kind of fun, you know, and if you're if you're new at it, a lot of people always say to me, you know, how do you get good? Well, you sit down, I don't care what level you're at, you sit down and you paint this, okay? Because it causes you to look at the tones and see the differences. And yes, you're going to make all kinds of mistakes if you're a beginner, but that's where you start, you know? And it's just painting a board, and you've got to start, and you've got to learn how to see this stuff. And uh, you know that's where that's where you're going to improve. You know, yeah, you you start it and then you improve it. So here I'm just going to come back through that dark I just put on with a little burnt sienna. I see and just change that tone slightly, and it'll it'll work. Here's just a touch of that darker tone there. Just a touch of that coming right around the front of that eye there. That's good. Just a whisper thin, thin of this. Right, I have, have a bit of, let's thin that out and a bit of yellow into that here. And that still could be, let's give it more power, some open medium, some light and some yellow oxide. Let's just pull through that. And I can just take my finger and pull down and just slightly blur those tones right there. I don't blend them, I blur them. So we'll put a bigger little mark of that right in there. That's going to help his muzzle come forward right there. Isn't this fun? <laughs> I just, guys, I just love doing this. Just finding and picking the tones and, you know, just uh, having some fun and you're going to make mistakes and stuff but you just slowly evolve the painting I just like doing that and you know hopefully you find all of the little mistakes you're going to make before you varnish it but sometimes you don't so you never say to anybody about the mistake you see uh, but uh, there's just so much fun I'm going to take just this smaller brush here and put his 
line in here for his mouth right there and uh, even darker yet I'm gonna go right to the blue and the violet and a touch of green one of the darkest colors I use in a painting here I don't use black very often I'm like the impressionist 19th century impressionist I don't use it too often here Just sharpen up those eyes a bit. Let's put the toned yellow in it. And see the lower part of his lid, I could come back here with this. Lower part here needs to have that dark outline. I painted some of it out. So we'll need to do that. And I need to correct it on her as well. And sometimes, you know, especially if you're a uh, younger painter when you're painting something like this um, sometimes you have to play with that those eyes and get them just right it's like on her I know the problem is on her where I don't like her here I got her eyes a little bit too uh, um, they're pinched down you know they're very harsh and so I want to open them up and warm them up a bit and stuff and um, I know I can do that but it's hard to do that sometimes when the painting is so wet here so I'll let some of that dry and I'll open it up a bit and um, <clears throat> friendly up her eyes a touch more than what they are right now that can be done but but sometimes you know like when I was just starting out in, in painting it would take me you know quite a bit of playing around to figure out the expressions and stuff on the eyes I've had a request to do Nothing but because uh, I used to paint, you know, people and stuff all the time, and he did expressions and learning what line, you know, what line gives what expression is really kind of important. And we should probably do that here a bit more. <clears throat> but I don't, you see, I know that there are, and this is the thing, is I know that there are mistakes. And there's areas that I'm going to want to correct and redo slightly and put some more interest in. I realize that I'm not trying to make it all just absolutely perfect right now. I'll be coming back and doing that. And uh, sometimes, you know, as, when you're learning, we try to do too much with one go. You know, hey, it's best just to sit back and come back at it again, maybe uh, after it sets up a bit. So here I'm just putting some dark and, and separating some more tone right in here. Getting just a little bit darker tone right in there. Painting that around her eye. I'm actually smoothing out some of the calligraphy, which, you know, looked really great on her when I first started. But um, not so much now as he goes on because she competes... Um, a touch with him so we can we can take care of that I want him to come forward here 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 like that and so let's get that lovely yellow oxide right into his eyes I don't think we'll use Hansa it might make him too glowy get that yellow oxide in there maybe a touch of the darty light Oh, let's lid large. Let's try it here. And, but I'll come back. You know, it's like here I wiped out some of that black and stuff there. And I get to do it again. <laughs> That's the, you know, the thing is we talked about, you know, in the 30 Days of Roses, those of you know that are following me and learning with me and stuff, and follow 30 Days of Roses, there's frustration. You get in frustration. But, you know, I I get frustrated all the time, and I actually kind of rejoice with the frustration. Here's just a tiny bit of white with that to lighten that up, and this will really bring his eye quite a bit forward. And that's a pretty good look there, but it will dry down. Just a touch, curly straight down. But you get frustration. That's just the nature of painting. You're going to get frustrated with it. And, um, you know, you're no different than anybody else. We all get that way. <laughs> it's just, are you going to let it defeat you or are you just going to keep going with it, you know? 
I keep going. Okay, let's put the front of his. Now, see, he's looking directly on us, so we're going to get some lighter yellows. This is just my small little filbert. We'll take some lighter yellows here first. If I do a lot of drawing, I like to draw with the darks as opposed to the lights. I like to texture the lights, but I like to draw and correct with the darks. So I'll put some darks on, I mean some lights on there, and I'll actually shape some more of that muzzle there with the light. Let's put just a, see it's the, and this is what I look for. See the difference there between light and shade? And that's okay, but a bit of that yellow half tone right in there would help that soften that line, do you see? And that's going to help his, actually his eye come forward there. And I really, that yellow is a little warm. It should have had just a touch of blue maybe into it here. So we'll just add just a touch of blue. Yeah, that's, that's just a bit better there. Okay. And so... I get that on there. Now I look, I can put the darker colors that it, you'll see right in there, those darker tones, I can put that in. I can also, while I have some of this light, they'll come back, touch, so before I change here, I'll go back and touch a bit of the light right around the edge of his eye here. Boy, is that ever small. Sometimes, you know, you put on those magnifying glasses and you go back and look at it and you go, oh my goodness. Because <laughs> it brings up every little stroke a little much, a little too much sometimes. Let's put just a touch of that light right up there. Yeah. This is where it gets small. This, But this is really where I like the small. Rather than using a round, and, and, and again, to, I don't use, I, I have rounds and... You know, um, I have him in my little toolbox over there. I, ha I can use them and stuff, and uh, but they they tend to push a a, a uh, edge of paint up to the sides as you put it on, and then you know if you get that little bead of paint, that can affect your drawing later on. So I don't always do. I don't always like to paint with them for any length of time or to do a lot of detail with them because they leave the little ridges of paint. That's just my own thing. Everybody's a little different. So I'll put on too much light and then I'll paint it back a bit here. And let's put that dark right out there towards his pupil there. That's better. Let's uh, take that dark has got his uh, eye, that yellow part of his eye is a little large, so I'm just going to tap some of it out with the dark. There. Like that. Set that eye into place. And I came in with that light a, a touch too much right here and took some of that dark out, so I'll just put a bit more of that dark right back in there. Maybe a bit on the upper eyelid here. Right there, that helps that on him. So now we'll go back. We'll work some of the yellow burnt siennas here. Let's even get some Darulite into that. I love that Darulite is a bit warmer. Just add. See how easy that is to add some of that dark kind of stroking calligraphy in there. Um, I just like the way that the darks do it as opposed to the lights. And it, it gives it a more natural, to me, feeling to it. So I like to push that. And I'll use this around a touch here to help some of that. Um, that is... And I'm looking at, see, I'm looking at the monitor here, what you guys are seeing on the up close. And then right there, I see what it's going to look like further back. And yeah, she could, we could actually put a dark on her and lighten just a bit right in there. I've got a round little pieces of her. I'm going to do that right now while I see that. So I'll just a touch there. Round that ear up a bit here. There, like that and um, 
Yeah, I really got to get in there and get a better color on her eye. And it's too squinty. That's the word I, a word I was looking for. She's too squinty right there. So I got to drop this down. You got to become more friendly. Yeah. And, uh, but that kind of stuff, sometimes you don't, you know, and that's the whole thing. And a lot of you just, you know, ask me and stuff for advice about doing it. And that's, that's one of the things is you don't always see that stuff right away. And then that causes a bunch of frustration. So if you don't see it right away, just forget about it for right now. That's not going to make or break the entire painting. Just forget about it right now. Move on to another thing. And then come back and take a look at it. And pretty soon you're going to go, oh yeah, okay. When you get other stuff on, sometimes that helps you see where the problem was, okay? So don't get wrapped up. We all do. I mean, I tend to. I mean, I tend to get fixated on an area. I've got to fix this area before I move on. No, you don't. You can just move on and come back and work on that area again. Hopefully you remember to do that before you finish the painting, but yeah, you don't you don't have to do it immediately. Let's thin this just a touch. Back to my dark with some of that burnt sienna and blue. And uh now that use the ch oh, phew, hit that blue. Let's uh Use the little chisel here. That's not quite so squinty right there. That's better. Let's give her a bit more of a pupil right there. And that's good. Touch of dark to the top. Pull that down. Now the eyes. That eye's looking a lot better, but it's a little large. So we'll thin that down a bit more. We'll try not to make it too squinty. And uh, we'll have to bring in some light. I'll paint up right towards it. Oh, now, it's, it's got a lot of paint back in there that's really wet. See, and I like acrylic. I like that to dry. That literally wet's hard for me to work in it. So I get to let that dry a bit, and then I'll come back in with some light and thin down that eye just a touch. Let's take some of this. I'll thin this down. And we have some extra on the side plane of his face right here that can go in. Maybe right down there. Like that. And pull down this side plane here. Touch more. Well, thin his face out a bit. There. And a bit of that darker, maybe darker with some burnt sienna. Right in here, another little tone difference. Right in there. That's pretty good. Yeah, bit of this. I do like scumbling with the darks, to sketch and draw kind of with the darks here. That's one of the things I like to do here, there. So it's a you know, we're fo kind of following along kind of some of the stuff we did on those elk. Gives it a nice, it's a different look to the paintings, doing the, the matched pairs here like this. And uh, it's kind of fun. This uh, side right in there could and I probably do that a bit uh, larger. Let's go up. Where's this one? That's my eight. So I'll go grab my six here and let's just take this, add some white, some open medium, get a nice gray that I can just work a bit of calligraphy here. There, without it getting too blended, put that side plane in. It could come out more. See how his comes out more? And that really does happen on the... If you look at that other timber wolf over there that I painted, 
It does happen like that. It really comes out sideways almost here. You can see it wet there, stiff, so I can just drag it like that and get some nice calligraphy, maybe up into his ear a bit. There. Like that. Here. Pull some of that calligraphy down. Let's get that bit warmer, bit yellow. And, you know, here, working this, you know, if you work him again another time, he'll just get better and better and they'll get more and more life. And what I do if I'm going to work him again is I narrow down so I have my vignette coming out this way. So I'll, I'll start to narrow down, working a little bit more, heading further into his face. So it's, you know, it, uh, so the working and so most of the texture and work starts to get it, out here, it fades away and then starts coming, 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 coming right up into the front of this face here is where he'll get the most of his work. And he will have just a little more work than she will. He's, you want him to come just a touch more in front. So, there. Give him an idea of his mouth there. But he could have some more light, some more dark, some other little half tones, little grayed half tones here. Some of this nice, beautiful gray right up in here, corner of the brush. Just some of it working in there. Up over into his ears. Here. Like that. And we'll go to that smaller brush here and work some of those grays. Work your tones. Work your tones. And I like to jump around the tones. So here I'm going to take out that light little spot with that dark of this tear duct there canal that should be there. And let's just take a... Sometimes, you know, you just simplify. You just go, okay, burnt sienna, boom, right in there. And see, that does a lot, even on the wolf there. Just a touch of burnt sienna right in there. It does a lot on him. And... uh for the overall wolf, it just does a lot. It's just kind of fun. So, you know, simplifying those tones. Okay, so we got some of that on him. Let's uh, work. We'll come back out. We'll grab some of the darks again. A few of these darks and lights. We'll work back and forth. Darks, lights, medium tones. We'll get some of the calligraphy on him. We'll probably have to go to a bigger brush here, calligraphy as well. We'll just get some of the, the movement on here of this. He starts to pull down this way, so I will pull that some of that. So as I'm working away from him, I'm gonna get a softer tone underneath here yet. Here. We're going to put in some snow and stuff and uh, maybe a bit of that softer light. So sometimes I'll, I, I'll just model up like this and let the calligraphy of the brush just come down. See, it gives that, pops him a little farther forward. I love to use these fusion brushes flat and then corners and edges and they just add so much to the painting by using the different corners because the hairs of the brush react differently on the different corners that you use it there like that okay okay let's um let's first let's soften this back line on her here too just might be a touch dark there. We have to correct that eye a bit. She's still just a bit squinty. It's that 
the highlight up there it's, that shine is just a bit squinty. That's better. Take part of it out here. Let's uh, get up a little bigger yet here. And uh, this is another one of those lovely ones that I forgot to clean out. So I just take a little bit of the hand sanitizer, <laughs> which is great stuff. Not only does it sanitize your hands, it also cleans the acrylic out of your brush really easy. And uh, give it a quick rinse. Then we'll come in with some um, tones here. Let's get some yellows, burnt siennas. So a little bit of open medium. I'll thin that out just a touch here. And uh, we'll push some of these. Beautiful. We're going to do uh, the vignetting out here on him. So I'm going to push some of these warm tones in here that I see as well. Then uh, we'll go to some grays, blue, burnt sienna. Get some nice wild grays going here. This is all beautiful tone here and push that in. Just don't take out all the yellow. Just let it flow through the yellow in some areas there. Okay. And uh, then if we get some light in here as well, just streaking some of that, we're going to let him start to fade out and I'll show you in just a second a real quick way to do that push a bit of gray on the back of his leg there let's uh, thin this and do a just an idea of the back legs here before they fade away here and and this is what I do I use my paper towel and I start taking off and I could carry even with a little bit of this blue his top line here before we let that fade away now what I do is I just take some water with a bit of water with the paper towel and I start pushing through this and I don't want to do it too much because it'll blend into just one tone but I want to pull through here and let some of this start to uh, fade out so you'll see him fading out through here there we go and then you can come back and build some additional strokes some some lines of his hair and stuff here um, there's some you know burnt sienna blue bit of uh, yellow we can push in there just very simplistic here let's darken this up a bit up here gray here push some of that around just and get just this is just a brush calligraphy of it watch the flow of your brush how it sets the direction everything that you're painting here. There we go. And uh, some of this right out through there and then I'll just reset some of the light colors. I want to build this a couple times on him right up here and very much a la prima casual right up like that here couple of light little strokes here. See how it'll help that furs him up a bit. You can go back into the grays there. There. Try not to mix it too much. Just let some of the strokes just come off here. There like that. There. there we go. I like doing this. I, it's so, you know, once you get him built, then you can go back to her and, and add, you know, more to her or whatever. 
Here I'll add a few more lights of the grays streaking through his hair right back up through here. Simplistically. Here, we'll keep him that way. And again, yeah, now let's um let's soften just for just to see. Because I'm not real sure. Let's soften some of the back back here. We'll use a lighter kind of a green. Come into our eye here just a bit there. Soften, lose that back edge of her face. So we'll push, because you can go back and forth with the light and the dark there. So see, that brings her forward a touch more. I do like that idea of the, um, you know, the other green that we talked about, the, the putting in the idea of a um, pine tree or something back there. Let's change this tone up a bit. Maybe a bit of yellow here. Just work some of that. We'll push some of that other darker green and stuff in there as well. We want to keep the looseness and stuff here of the of the painting, but we want to um, you know we want to build into here. So this is one of the things that sometimes you just have to uh, let's just drag that right down into that. Sometimes you just have to try, experiment with it, like, what well, you know, and try different ideas. And as you go through paintings over the years, you get all of these ideas, you'll remember things. Like here, I can bring the edge of a tree, something that's going to come, which I wanted to kind of do, that's going to, idea-wise, going to come maybe right across him, that instead of totally completely vignetting him out we'll put a like he's coming out of something here like the edge of a tree or something here there and you can pull through and soften out and that's all going to be good i'm going to put some snow in here as well and work that rock there bit of lighter gray on that rock. Real simplistic here. Very simplistic, some other tones on it. Always, I always say, you know, give yourself three, four minutes to paint a rock. Don't paint, don't paint anything more than that because then you start putting too much into it, you know, and the rock becomes the most important thing of the painting. <laughs> so, yeah, don't put too much into it. Blues and reds make beautiful grays as well here for that mid-tone area there, for that receding plane here. Let's, uh, let's grab some white, a little bit of violet, because we wanted to put maybe some blues and stuff here into the painting. Some violet as we get over to... Uh, Grab some open medium, maybe a little bit of extender. And it's just to kind of loosen it up here. And the idea here, we want to keep this very, very loose here. We want the idea of some snow here it's like that very impressionistic and this then we'll after we put that cool violet on you could warm it with a touch of yellow but I just might use some uh, just some light color here push that on here Here, like that. There. Let's, and you know, you can get some really nice dollops of light and just pull right through there. Tap a little bit to give it some interest, you know, snow interest and stuff. 
you step back and look at that, that's pretty neat. That works pretty well. Then you can also take some of that light right here with the violets here. Even just some water, something to thin it. Add some of those violets into your sky here. And some of the other ideas of the the uh, trees and stuff, which, you know, and again, this is the impressionist part of it. And again, some of you might want to go more realistic, you know, and I'm going to go just very much the impressionist part of it there and working that. And I'll look, you know, I like to, as I get more powerful with it, I like to just put in powerful marks of color and stuff as well. And, uh, yeah, and you know, I'll look for certain areas like on his leg here, and or her leg, excuse me, and uh, drop that in there. And uh, yeah, and so now I have them like that. Now I'm probably going to come in and, and put in some more, um, you know, like the back edge of that tree that I wanted to show you. I, I liked this one that had a bit of that tree back there, um, you know, the idea of it and stuff. So, yeah, that can be easily done. Just some different greens and stuff like that here. And, and give some ideas of that. So I'll probably push some of that in. And this is just where you try. You just try some different things here. You might pick up, you know, there's something back up over here that's mostly going to get put into the frame and covered up, but you might see it, <laughs> you know, here. That's what I, I like about it, just uh, very impressionistic. And so now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do that. I'm going to go through and work her eye and stuff here. We're almost out of time. I'm going to come through and work her eye and stuff again, and uh, then I'll come back and put some final little strokes and stuff on. So give me a second to do that, and we'll put some final little blue lights and uh, stuff up here, give you guys a, a look at the last of the the painting here, how it all came out, but I'll, I'll just be doing that kind of stuff, and I'm going to fix her eye and set, the, set their look and stuff, and then we'll come back real quick before we run out of video time and uh, let you see it all, okay? All right, see you in a minute. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Well, I went in it and found out what was wrong with her eye. I, like I said, it was getting too squinty, so I just rounded it up a little bit. And I actually lightened it just a bit, and I, I like that better. And uh, I had this line slightly off down just a bit. I, I raised that line back up, and I like her a lot better. And in him, I just added some more paint up into the front, and I was just adding some little touches of with my brush here ideas of green and little little dabs and stuff of of the light this little sparks of it you know to to uh, indicate some snow and stuff around i just added this light in there so that'll probably dry down on him there's not a lot of room to add a lot of boy i do like it back here like that i did put a little more blue and stuff back here to soften it and i could do that i um you know this is the impressionism that i really like to do and I just kind of let myself go and, and have some fun with it. And don't forget to always have that paper towel, that wet paper towel out in front of you. So if you do something that you don't like, you can, you know, you can take it off. But I'll just pile up, you know, strokes of, and I'll leave textures with it, t strokes of snow and stuff like this right up to the front. I, I like that because that just, you know, it just adds, you know, so much to the painting. But some of those streaks and stuff, you know, if you get like too much blue, you can bring a streak of that, you know, right back down, just like snow or, or uh, you know, some misty kind of thing right back behind her there as well. And that will bring her forward here. You know, I we ended up softening that area right in there. And, um, you know, you could soften that more with a, a touch more light or even a light blue 
you know, just lightly pushing down through some of that and seeing if that's, you know, that's going to bring her forward, watching the other guy there. But that, um, you can see that. And that's one of the things that I like that, you know, and a lot of you that are beginners out there that, you know, changing your tone. See how many, now look, I've come back here like four times and you can see the tones changing up through there. And that just adds a lot. Sometimes it adds too much, but you know, that adds a lot to the painting. And um, so you just kind of go for it and you, you, you see that. Um, so anyway, uh, those darks and stuff on there, that works pretty good. I might put a couple of, you know, I was thinking like a real light, and this is where I look at it. Look, I like this light coming down here. I might put, lighten up a, a shoulder stroke, even though you don't see it too much on him there. You know, take some of my lighter grays and running out of colors here now, and some lighter grays, some blues, and some and this is where you just try and you get ready to take it off if you don't like it um and see you know here's some my my whites here and that's kind of a good gray maybe a bit lighter and just see you know do you want a couple of yeah that's going to be kind of nice right in there kind of push that up and in and uh you know, leave some of those strokes on him like that. And again, you can work some dark down into it, you know, build up some color, in other words. Build up some color, some textures on him right in there, and that'll make him really pop forward, especially onto this, this shoulder area here, just like that. See, this, this good textures kind of read the, you know, and I don't, want to take off too much so I, I hold that brush and you notice I redress the brush you don't want to because see I pick up light with it see that and if I go back and touch that dark shadow area with that light you just track that around that's not too bad that's uh that's kind of good on him there put a bit more of that right in there it, that that works kind of good maybe a, a downward stroke with some light maybe a bit of yellow into that Right down here, take some of his hair down there. And, but anyway, you can play with that to see and then take a look at it, see how they how they pop off, if that's what you want to do, okay? So it's a lot of fun. You gotta let yourself go and have some fun with it. My hands look like this. So it took me about another 15 minutes is what I worked on that. And um, it's something that I know about myself. And you see, you know, when you watch those roses, you watch me paint real fast. If I want to get that casual, I got to paint real fast because if I slow down, oh boy, it's terrible. Because I try to, I, I try to be perfect. It's the left brain comes out, and I try to be perfect. So I got to have a little bit of speed with it. But that's kind of a fun when those of you that want to lighten up a little bit, you have some detailed work, and then lightening up. Uh, Lightening up your technique is kind of fun, okay? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're going to do a lot more uh, coming up here now. I have some time off, so I'm going to film a whole bunch of these. And I'm going to go back to some beginning lessons. And my big western over there, it's got the frame on it. And I'm going to um, finish up that framing one. Show you guys how I framed that all up and those finishing touches on that big, long western that I did. And that has a lot of really great techniques in it, too, if you want to learn how to incorporate a story and, you know, landscapes and stuff together. I have a beautiful set of peonies all drawn up, too, that we're going we're gonna to paint. We're going to get back into some flowers and stuff, too, but some more landscapes. i got a lot of requests. If something you want to see, don't forget to always remind me. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, hurt to remind me a couple of times, too. You know, i got a list, and we're going we're gonna to get them all, okay, because we're just having a good time painting. Like I say, again, all the descriptions and everything in the description of the videos, all the colors that I use, brushes, links to everything that are there. Those of you that are channel members, First, thank you for those of you that help support our channel. Um, I will put the drawing, the photos, and everything up into a link into it. We might even build a page like we did for our channel members, like we did for the Western, so that you have step photos, you have all kinds of stuff to look at, okay? All right, so uh, thanks very much for that, and check the community page. Those of you that don't know, there's a community page, and you just hit the community page, and uh, depending on your membership, you'll be able to see different things, okay? Alrighty. 
Thanks a lot, guys. And uh, we'll paint another one. We'll go do some more fun ones, okay? All right, see you next time.